Hello Saints, thank you for joining us today. I am Yaqueline Alfaro and this is your weekly newscast with everything you need to know for the upcoming week. Hey Saints, it's time to vote. Olu is getting ready for November. Here is Paris Quintanilla with more. Hello, this is Paris Quintanilla reporting for the Lakefront Media and it's voting season. And in November, Greg Abbott or Beto Rube will be announced as the governor of Texas. Olu is doing their part with the election by serving as the polling site for the community. This year, a registered Bear County voter can vote early in the community room located in the Olu Sultan Fuest Library. Many students around campus are planning to cast their vote this election, as voting is an opportunity for change. I think it's important for students to be involved in voting because we see all these people that we don't want, but then we have to remember, like, are you participating in voting? Or if we want these people that we don't want to get out of office, we need to vote for the people that we do want. According to the National Association of Latino Elected and Appointed, <laughs> Nearly 1.8 Latinos are expected to vote in this November election. And simply, Olu is just trying to do their part and get the West Side community out and ready for what's to come this November. Gabriel Cook, editor-in-chief of Lakefront Media, wrote an article on all the important information that one must know and be aware of before going to the voting sites. Um, there's tons of websites that you can go on online to see if you're registered. Um, but you need to make sure you walk before you go in to vote. Um, when you do actually go into vote, you need to make sure that you're bringing a valid ID. Um, a valid ID can be a driver's license, a Texas, a Texas ID, military ID, um, or a Texas like voting certificate. That being said, October 11th is the last day to register to vote, and October 24th marks the first day of early voting. Students, faculty, and staff are encouraged to come up to the community room to place their vote and make a difference. For more information on voting, visit www.votetexas.gov. Saints, have you or any of your classmates ever wanted a dental checkup, examination, or teeth cleansing? Lakefront reporter Kimo Ture reports with what you need to know. Have you signed up for the dental day? If not, you're not alone. Been on and off the well fleet insurance, um, and I've yet to sign up for the dentist day. If you're a Wellfleet student health insurance holder, this message is for you. The dentist will be in UAG room 112, Friday, November 11th. Julie Kneiper, the health education resource officer, tells you how to sign up. You simply call the health education office at 210-431-3919 to make your appointment. And um, it is, at this time, only available to Wellfleet students because it is brought courtesy of the insurance. The appointment take about 30 minutes, and there's a form to fill out upon arrival. Reporting for Lakefront News, I'm Kimo Ture. Recently, there was an amazing event in which mass communication students were able to attend and learn more about the field. The Fall Fiesta Texas Association of Journalism Educators Convention. Mass communication majors, minors, and anyone interested in the field were presented a great opportunity. On the 8th of October, the Fall Fiesta Convention commenced. Those who attended learned many new things if they happened to attend. From different speakers, new connections, and even our Lady of the Lake's very own Professor Brown giving a presentation. This convention consisted of many experiences. Olu student, Teresa Keen further explains why this experience was one that will be beneficial for the long run. I thought it was really interesting. I was able to um, learn a new level of writing, um, so I thought it was really fun. And then also I was able to go with some really awesome people, so overall it was a great experience. Overall, the Fall Fiesta Convention was one that impacted many students, including Olu's very own Mass Comm students. So many students from campuses all over the city of San Antonio attended the convention and got at least a little more insight pertaining to writing. As Keen expressed, a new level of writing was presented to her. Not to mention that the convention's tickets were valid for three days. If you happen to be interested in the secrets of exceptional writing, make sure to be on the lookout for any mass comm events and conferences around Olu and San Antonio. May this encourage you to keep up with 
Olu Mass Communications, and remember that the future is what we create, so be inspired to write away. Halloween only happens once a year, but with a little planning, you can extend the celebration for a whole month. Halloween is right around the corner like a maniac with an extreme large and sharp lay object. And what screams scary season these days more than horror movies? Scary Godmother, even though it's not scary. Um, I grew up watching that from when I was little and then reruns of just watching it again. It's all over my Instagram now. And I was like, oh my goodness, I have to watch it again. From classics like Halloween, Friday the 13th, or Annabelle, to more modern hits like Scream, A Quiet Place, and more. There's something for everyone. Classics like Halloween, Friday the, Friday the 13th, Annabelle, and modern hits like Scream, A Quiet Place, and The Hunted Hill. And The Hunted Hill House. There's something for everyone. What will you be watching this spooky season? This is Daniela Bakker reporting for Lakefront. Happy Fall, Olu. With the spring semester around the corner, Our Lady of the Lake prepares students with its annual Get It Done Fair. The Olu Get It Done Fall Fair was hosted this past week to help students get it done with advising, registration, and payment plans, and especially graduation. Olu Services and Resources also attended this event while promoting their department with fun giveaways. Hi, my name is Catherine Farwoso, otherwise known as Cat, here at Our Lady of the Lake University. I am your director for the Center for Student Involvement. And what we're doing here today is our Get It Done Fall Fair, helping students to prepare for graduation, crossing that stage, or getting ready for the spring. If you happen to miss this event, there is still time to meet with your advisor and get ready for the 2023 spring semester. Soon to be graduates, wanting to get it done, can get the assistance they need in the main building at the entrance of the Renaissance Parlor during community hour. Have you got it done? If you have missed this event, reach out to your advisor as soon as possible. Dracula may want your blood, but so does the South Texas Blood Bank. Wednesday, October 19th, the South Texas Blood Bank was on campus in the mall area from 8.30 to 3.30 to collect blood. If you missed the blood drive, many are held throughout the year still. There are some requirements in order to, do, to donate blood. First, you must be over 170 pounds, you cannot have donated in the last 30 days, and if you recently got a tattoo. You have to be able to say where you got it from, on the plus side, this is also an opportunity to get a service hour as well as a cute Halloween t-shirt, among other things. For more information, please contact the Wellness Center. One pint of blood saves up to three lives. And we've had quite a bit of activity across the United States with Ian the hurricane. So if you're looking for a way to help out the hurricane victims, blood donating is a great opportunity for that. Are you keeping up with new shows on Netflix? The new Jeffrey Dahmer series has been a popular show since the latest release. Despite its popularity, there has been controversy on whether or not another show on Dahmer was appropriate. Here is Jennifer Salgado with more. The new Netflix true crime drama series, Monster, The Jeffrey Dahmer Story, has received many mixed reviews and even some controversy about the purpose of the show and why it was made. Starring Evan Peters as the infamous serial killer, Netflix's new series, Dahmer, has taken the internet by storm along with sparked discussion about whether or not the show exploits the horrific acts that Dahmer committed in 1978 through 1991. No, so it was a pretty good show. I liked it. Um, I do believe it was exploring towards minorities because that's what he was going for. But uh, I don't think they should make another one because then more people are going to like think positive things about him, which in reality it wasn't. According to IndieWire.com, Dahmer has now topped Netflix's global top 10 for three weeks in a row. It's gotten 701.37 million hours viewed to date. I haven't seen it yet. I've heard a lot about it. It's very trending on Twitter, Instagram, or any social media platform. It's trending a lot. I've seen clips here and there, but I don't plan on watching it just because I don't think it was necessary to make another series on him. And I also think it's highly disrespectful of Netflix and the producers to uh, create another series on him, especially without the family's consent. With social media, there have been all kinds of speculation about inappropriate interpretations of the show that have led viewers to make a joke out of the series. I don't know why people are taking a joke, and then they're doing all these TikTok videos about like Jeffrey Dahmer, 
and then they're doing that the little trend of dance while getting yeah. certain items. I don't think that's necessary. That's like oh, you're pushing it too far. Some are even concerned about where the show may direct viewers in a negative way that can be a caution to the real world. I would hate to see that it inspires someone to create a copycat of him. Or, I mean, inspire is the wrong word, but provoke someone to do what he did, especially in the times we live in now, is very, very dangerous. So I think that would be like very scary. Although there are many opinions about the chilling and eerie show, the victims of Jeffrey Dahmer will remain present in the consciences of many and will never be forgotten. Reporting for Lakefront News, I'm Jennifer Salgado. Although there are many mixed opinions about the chilling and eerie show, the victims of Jeffrey Dahmer remain present in the consciences of many and will never be forgotten. Reporting for Lakefront News, that was Jennifer Salgado. Living on campus can be a luxury for most, but for the university being on the west side of San Antonio, students worry about their safety. Here is Teresa Keen for more information. There is a public road in the middle of our university. So that just comes with the question, is Our Lady of the Lake University actually a safe place to live in? Olu Campus Police is working very hard to protect the students of Our Lady of the Lake University. Our Lady of the Lake University's police department is actually on campus 24-7, 365 days a week to ensure the safety of Olu students. Um, I would say that I am uh, quite worried um, just because even though Olu is a safe space, everything around it is not. And I've been a witness to it. I know that there's a lot of crime just here on 24th and Commerce. So, you know, it's pretty scary. The Olu police officers are trained to handle a full range of community community service, including assistance with all medical emergencies, fires, alarm responsibles, traffic accidents, investigations, suspect to activity reports, and so much more. And also the Our Lady of the Lake University are certified in first aid and CPR, patrol rifle use, basic instructor, hostage negotiations, and International Police Mountain Bike Association. If you are experiencing a danger that is an emergency, feel free to call 210-433-0911 or for non-emergencies, call 210-431-4022. And of course, always be aware of your surroundings and make sure that you always look both ways when crossing the road. As the fall season continues to bring us beautiful weather and wonderful festivities, Our Lady of the Lake Ministry will be offering a Dia de los Muertos event. This event invites you to make your very own marigold flowers. Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos is a tradition celebrated by many that commemorates those who have been passed on. These ofrendas are also decorated with bright yellow marigold flowers that are thought to guide the spirits to their own special ofrendas and Olu Ministry will help you make your very own. As Olivia Garcia shares, it is an event you don't want to miss. So we're going to be making um, paper marigolds to go on our um, Dia de los Muertos altars that are going to be outside and inside. So if you just want to stop by and make a flower, we'd love to have you. And the Dia de los Muertos um, ceremony is going to be on November 1st. So don't forget to mark your calendar and stop by the Renaissance Parlor to participate in this traditional event. And remember, saints, enjoy the moment because in crafting there are no mistakes, just unique creations. The fall season is upon us, and for all of the fall book readers out there, the Olu Library has some great options for you. With the fall season in full speed, the time to read a spooky novel or a Hispanic Heritage Month novel is right now. The Olu Library is having their weekly To Be Read Tuesdays. Every week, they display a book they re recommend, and right now, they're focusing on a Halloween and Hispanic Heritage Month theme. They focus on books that have movie and TV tie-ins. Olu Systems and Web Services librarian Yanira Cruz explains how they manage to connect with students across all campuses. Um, you'll see some of the books behind you, um, some of the graphic novels, and some of the other titles. We try to like do, uh, if, we, if possible, movie tie-ins. So the Neil Gaiman, um, the Sandman book one, 
is going to be turned into a Netflix series. It may already be one. So we're always trying to kind of connect with students here and um, other students at other campuses as well. If by chance you attend a different Olu campus, or if you're a virtual student, but are still interested in partaking in To Be Read Tuesdays, the Olu Library is willing to mail out books to students who request. In fact, they have mailed books to various students across the country. If you're interested, please contact library at olusa.edu. The books in the library are free to check out for Olu students, so don't forget to take advantage. On behalf of Olu, we wish you a spooky Halloween season and may you find more treats than tricks. It's officially spooky season, meaning the supernatural is once again an extremely hot topic and Our Lady of the Lake University is rumored to be one of the most haunted places in Texas. I think the campus overall has that haunted presence. So. Officially spooky season, meaning the supernatural is once again an extremely hot topic and Our Lady of the Lake University is rumored to be one of the most haunted places in Texas. Pacelli Hall is where most of the supposed hauntings occur. A ghost named Jack is what students would call the most famous and the most mischievous kind of ghoul. No matter how fun Jack's spirit may be, there are others that seem to overpower him. She is known as the Restless Nun. Olu has over a hundred years under its belt, and many students have reported seeing several different ghosts roaming its halls, especially in the dorming area. Joshua Padilla, a student here at Olu and dorm resident, says he's had his own experience with the ghosts and has heard other similar stories. So is Our Lady of the Lake haunted? We may never know, but sometimes things are just unable to be explained. Now in community news, the Queen of Soul Scholarship Foundation hosted its first ever Spill the Tea with the Queen of Soul event. Lakefront reporter Daylin Mann has more information on the excitable event. I am here at the Hearthstone Bakery and Cafe Event Center for the Queen of Souls first annual Spill the Tea event. Currently we are here with the Queen of Soul Incorporation. They have been on the scene since 1968 by Gracie Griffin Poe and Mr. Tom Turner. The Queen of Soul Foundation is rich in history and we are just going to report live on the event today. San Antonio Queen of Soul is hosting their Spill the Tea event to fundraise and introduce the Queen of Soul Foundation to the community. Current Queen of Soul President Mrs. Joe Betsy Booker gives us more a more in-depth look into what Queen of Soul is all about. We're a 501c3 organization and a participating member organization of the San Antonio Fiesta Commission. Our responsibility or the reason why we exist is to have scholarships for young ladies that's a part of and to be a part of the fiesta uh, uh, commission the spill the tea event provided snacks refreshments and knowledge as president joe betsy booker gave an informative presentation about this year's queen of soul pageant when they will crown a new queen of soul Guests were encouraged to interact with the Queen of Soul in court to divulge what is to be expected when starting the pageant process. Me, the Queen of Soul pageant, helped me connect with other young African American women that were older than me and uh, doing very great things in my community. And this luncheon really was just able to let me meet other young women who are possibly going to join the Queen of Soul pageant and also connect back with my pageant sisters. The Queen of Soul Foundation has done a lot of good for the African American ladies in our community. If you're interested in becoming a Queen of Soul or even participating in the pageants, please go to Queen of San Antonio, Queen of Soul .com or email Miss Jo Betsy Booker or Rochelle Staten to find out more information. The Queen of Soul Foundation has done a lot of good for the African American ladies in our community. If you are interested in becoming a Queen of Soul or even participating in the pageants, please go to sanantoniaqueenofsoul.com 
or email Ms. Jo Betsy Booker or Rochelle Statton to find out more information. Hey Saints, as midterms wrap up for the fall semester, registration for spring classes are headed your way. Now is the perfect time to learn more information about when to register for spring classes and its benefits. As midterms wrap up for the fall semester, spring registration is headed your way. And now is the perfect time for you to learn more about how to register for your spring courses. The community of Our Lady of the Lake University is expanding and with the help of the academic advisors, students are given the necessary resources towards registering and managing their classes. As spring semester approaches, it is recommended by academic advisors for all students to sign up for classes as soon as possible to assure a spot in class. So registering early for classes means that you have first dibs on the class that you want to take and that's good because when you have it, that means that you secured your spot in that class. It is apparent that many students do not know how to register for classes. With the second semester of the 2022-2023 academic year moving closer, it is important for all students to not only know how to sign up for classes, but who their assigned academic advisors are. Um, we are planning for spring 2023 courses. so. Um, we, I do uh, plan courses and, and we use student planning and maps. Um, and so anything that the student thinks that we should discuss, um, I also assist in that as well. Early registration for the spring semester begins on October 24th for all seniors and graduate students. Registration for juniors is on October 25th and October 26th is early registration for sophomores and freshmen. Hey Saints, remember to reach out to your academic advisor in a timely matter so you can get first dibs on spring courses. The community of Our Lady of the Lake University, expanding and with the help of the academic advisor students, are given the necessary resources towards registering and managing their classes. As spring semester approaches, it is recommended by academic advisors for all students to sign up for classes as soon as possible to assure a spot in class. It is apparent that many students do not know how to register for classes. With the second semester of the 2022-2023 academic year moving closer, it is important for all students to not only know how to sign up for classes, but who their assigned academic advisors are. Early registration for the spring semester begins on October 24th for all seniors and graduate students. Registration for juniors is on October 25th, and October 26th is early registration for sophomores and freshmen. The baseball team has just started their fall season workouts, and thankfully, we were able to catch up with players, Brandon Betancourt, Matthew Sanchez, and Nick Alonso, to ask them about their time under the baseball program here at Olu. Play at the next level, I mean, not a lot of high school players can experience this. Man, they're not even teammates at this point. They become brothers, best friends. Olu baseball team has inter squads every Thursday and Friday. First pitch is at 3.30 on both days, so if you aren't doing anything, come support Olu Saints. That is all for today, Saints. I am Yakelin Alfaro. Stay safe and thank you for joining us. Till next time.